webcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on CPA Academy. My name is Christine, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar on diversity and inclusion one-on-one, -on -one, the value of a DAEI leader. Before we get started, I want to make sure everything is working on your end. So let's do a quick check by going over to your GoToWebinar control panel. And if you could locate the questions box there and just type me a quick message to let me know that you hear my voice. You see the title slide of the presentation on your screen right now. And you should be seeing both of our presenters today, Jana Etienne with Etienne Consulting and Lisa Konecki with Inclusion Ally on their webcams. And while you're there, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from across the country or across the world. Hi, John Lugo, nice to see you in here. All right, I see a check-in from Fernley, Nevada. Hello, hello, Nashville, welcome. VA, welcome, Colorado. I see a Canadian neighbor here getting a check-in from Honolulu. My goodness, that sounds nice. New yeah. York, Sacramento, California, Illinois, Missouri. All right, looks like everyone's good to go so far. If you do experience any technical trouble or you have any questions or comments that may come up for presenters during the presentation, please put them in the questions box and we'll make sure to address them. If we do run out of time due to content, we'll make sure to forward any questions or comments over to our presenters after the webinar is over. Now that we are all set on audio and visuals, let's go over some housekeeping for credits. Today's webinar is going to qualify for one CPE credit. To get the full credit, you want to make sure that you stay logged in for 50 minutes of our allotted time, and you want to make sure to also answer at least three out of the four polling questions. That means we're going to be launching four polls total throughout the presentation. Each time we launch a poll, we'll make sure to announce it beforehand. We'll give you a closing counting down, as well as you'll see a poll box take place of where you see the slides right now, and you'll be able to select your answer and submit your vote. Once again, to earn that full credit, make sure you answer at least three out of the four polls. If you are on a mobile device today, you might need to click your answer a few times and scroll down to find that submit button. And if you have to log out and log back in for any reason at all, our system will keep track of your time. Once the webinar is over, we're going to make sure to process your CPE credit and that will be available in your CPA Academy accounts within 24 hours. I also wanted to let you all know that we are recording today's webinar. The archive recording along with your CPE credit is going to be available in your CPA Academy accounts within 24 hours. We also recommend that you download today's presentation materials, which can be found in your GoToWebinar control panel located under the handouts tab. Oof, that was a lot. Now let me step out of the way and give a warm welcome to today's presenters. Jana and Lisa, come on down. The floor is all yours. She said, come on down. I was waiting for the price is right, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so this Fun. is being recorded. I guess we need to behave. Is that how this works, Lisa? Well, I mean, when we're talking DE and I, uh, okay, but whatever, whatever goes, it's your show. Yeah, we'll see. Well, thank you for joining us, um, or me or us. Um, we have a couple of people who join us regularly. So everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Lisa. Okay, hold on, I have notes. Kennecke, Lisa Kennecke. Perfect. So we met a couple weeks ago, actually, I think it was just over a month ago, I found her somewhere in the web, on the web. Um, and when we connected, you know, you shared your story and I just knew I wanted you to join me here to talk about, if she's going to share some of her story, her experiences, but to talk about how to become a capital A ally. And so I'm really interested in having everyone hear more about that. I watched your TED talk. I was on your website. I watched your video. You know, it's really compelling stuff and I can, I can really relate. So couple fun facts. Well, this isn't so fun. You live in Madison, Wisconsin. I don't know if that's do. a fun fact, but the fun fact is, is. For me, it is. Yes. Go Badgers. And go ba go what? Badgers. Our, um, our state animal is a rodent that lives in the ground and it's called a badger. Got it. That sounds interesting. And the other thing is mint makes you sneeze. Is that right? That is a true story. So whether it's an allergy or just an odd fact about me, um, yep, and it's only one sneeze. I I eat mint, I sneeze once, and we're and then we move on. Only if you eat it. Got it. So if I were to waft it around in the room, you don't sneeze. Nope, good point. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. And let's start with the big question. Although I know you wrote a book about it, but the big question. When I was talking to you about the series and asked you to join, what, why did you say yes? What does this conversation mean to you? 
one of we are all put on this planet for a reason and i believe whether i started out as a camp director then i was a middle and a high school counselor now i'm a professor training the next gen generation of school counselors it is about saving lives and to me um, growing up in rural wisconsin not even knowing that it was an option to be gay because my sister told me when i was 25 what i wanted to do is to make sure that youth and anyone else who is living their true life maybe it's lgbt maybe it is that you want to become wiccan whatever it is to let them be and so it, it is about saving lives and and providing information and yeah I, I wrote the book about how to be an inclusion ally the abcs of lgbtq plus and i literally take you through each letter of the alphabet giving you resources and how you can up your allyship Speaking of which, let me show everybody um, on the slides. There it is. Here's your book, um, and it's available. I think it's also available on a Amazon, right? As an as an ebook. Yep. Amazon. Anywhere books are sold. And folks, I will tell you when you download the handout, like always, on the bio page, all of those contacts. You can click the email. You can click the website. You can click your Twitter, and you'll jump out there. You can also click the picture of the book here in the PDF, and it'll coincidentally, Lisa, drop you into the Amazon. Um, I on the Amazon page. So there you go. So this is what we're going to talk about today. What These are your words. Show your allyship. Shift from a small A ally to a capital A ally and shape policies and procedures. Um, but before we do that, and you just mentioned this, LGBTQ, LGBTQ+, and I have seen an acronym that's like 15 characters long, no joke. May I just say, for those who aren't familiar, could you tell us what they mean? Yes, and I'll go slowly as well because I tend to just rattle it off just like my alphabet soup. So, oh, um, oh, and real quick, don't forget the plus. Like, what the hell is that? Right. Well, and the and I I threw in the plus being a Gen Xer so that I could you know put it down into uh, relatable terms. So, um, originally it was lesbian, gay, bisexual. Um, and then transgender came along. So it really started out as lesbian, gay, bisexual. Then the T was added for transgender. Then in, I believe it was 2019, the Human Rights Campaign added the Q. And the Q stands for queer and questioning. So um, we have taken back the term um, that had a negative connotation on the queer. And you, if you've seen the TV show Queer Eye, it's not even Queer Eye for the straight guy anymore. So it's just queer. And we do have a lot of friends who are questioning. And then, Jana, the plus. Here we go, my friends. This is anything and everything else that falls under our little rainbow umbrella. A lot of that includes our friends who might be i'm not going to go deeply into it but you will hear a lot of friends um calling themselves maybe non-binary mm -hmm. or non-conforming or um using different pronouns so the plus really is to include any and all shape manner form beliefs whatever it is and i love using the plus and i love that you asked that question because it really brings in the intersectionality of our entire world even though i am a cisgender ooh, another word i was born female or i was assigned female at birth and i still identify as female that's cisgender right. i use the term gay my wife uses the term lesbian so there's lots and lots of different things out there and it changes. Yeah. So don't worry if you don't know what's going on. I'm Lisa K, your everyday gay. You can just ask me. Lisa K, your everyday gay. Please tell me you have that on a t-shirt. Soon. Soon, Soon to be on a yeah. t-shirt coming near you. Yes. Send me the link. I will buy one. They'll be confused because I'm Jana J. Um, anyway, it doesn't work. So a couple things that I thought of. One. If this is a technical question. You're gay, your wife says lesbian. Does that mean can men be lesbian or only women can be both? Great question. And I take the privilege of using the term gay. Um, and, and that comes from my educational background. So I'm so glad that you asked that question and someone else asked that in the questions as well. So I'll start with my wife. My wife is what's considered passing. 
So if you were to look at my wife, she looks like a girl. She's got the stereotypical features. You know, she dresses like a girl. I, on the other hand, am. Back in the day growing up, I was the tomboy. And now I would be considered maybe gender nonconforming because I have short hair. I don't wear makeup. I don't necessarily like wearing dresses. Well, I don't like wearing dresses there. I just said that. And so for me, when I say that I'm gay, it is, it's an opportunity for people to ask that question and not go directly, not that your audience would do this by any stretch, but sometimes when the term lesbian is used, some people go directly to, oh, that's what happens in the bedroom. And I am so much more than, wow. than just that. I never even thought of that. So many things. Like, let's just stay here for the next two hours. Um, okay, great. So many things that you said. So there's a question, examples of queer, please. Um, because I understood queer to be a bad word, a bad term, kind of like the N-word. Um, and then I heard years ago uh, the idea of reclaiming it. Um, so there's that. You use the word passing. And there are many of us who pass as something, which relates, reminds me of covering, right? Um, and then, yeah. but going all the way back to the LGBTQ+, what I love about the way you defined it is that includes me. Plus sure. includes me. So Allies. I also am cisgender. I was assigned female at birth. I am a woman. I'm also heterosexual because I'm attracted to a man. But guess what? I'm part of the plus. And that's the beautiful yeah. thing. And maybe if we can all just understand that we're just different forms of human, then we can just get past all of the crazy. 100%. And that's why I love the term inclusion. And I know that, um, I, yes, I am a DEI speaker in, in the general term. And yes, a, a friend of ours in here has efforts, inclusion, and diversity. Yeah. There are so many different letters that you can use. So well done on that, John. And in different examples of queer. And so I, I could use the term queer. I think for me, it's a generational thing. So again, so I'm 50, 52, so I'm, I'm the kind of at the end of the Gen Xers. And for me to say that, the people who came before me couldn't do or say anything. Right. So they they blazed a trail for me. And then just like you just said, Jana, being an ally, and we need you, we need your power and your privilege to help us to conquer any and everything we can. So I love that. All right, I'm totally derailing this conversation. Let's, um, let's go back to your terms, big A and big A. What's yep. the difference? Like what? Are, what? Are, so, what's the difference? Yep. So I'll actually I'll give you my story, which kicked yes. all of this off. So I was a middle school counselor in my oh, wait, second wait, wait, year. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, wait. So sorry. Before we get fired by the the, the gods, can we do a let's, polling question? Let's do a poll question. Yes, absolutely. Right. I love education. Christine, <laughs> the first one before we get fired. Absolutely. All right, we are launching poll question number one. Great timing here, Jana. All right, so it should be on your screen. If you're not seeing it, please let me know in that questions box. Otherwise, you should be seeing what is the more inclusive way to great audi greet audiences? Hello? Welcome, everyone. Excited to see you or all of the above. This is a trick question, isn't it? Well, from the vantage point of me being an inclusive educator, not necessarily trick, but it's a fun way to answer. Last time we had somebody asking about like, where's the worst place that you could get trapped? And I'm like, well, there's an interesting question. There was a psychology to it, but that was interesting. Sure. Um, and we are a few seconds out. So I'm gonna toss out a couple comments here. Um, Julia says that this conversation is much cooler than taxes. And I'm a former CPA, I'm a former tax person. So I don't know if I'm Tickled or offended by that. And then um, Melissa says you're amazing. So that's all. That's awesome. And just to let you know that, you know, Lisa Kay, your everyday gay, I pick up dog poop and I, I pay taxes just like all of you. So that's another way to go. And can I add something real quickly to that poll yeah. question? One of the things that I'm really trying to do when I present and teach my graduate students is rather than welcoming a group with ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. 
is to, that's why we asked that poll question, is to be open and affirming to anyone and everyone. So should I give the answer away or not yet? I'm gonna go with, let me take a guess. All of the above. Yes, yes, and however you <laughs> answered it. And if you speak in American Sign Language, you can say hi as well, whatever works for you, my friends. Yeah, thank you. And and um, it even taught me to stop saying things like, thanks guys. Yeah, you know, that's that next year. term we throw out often. And that you say it isn't a mistake because we all say it. We all say things that we realize after the fact, maybe I shouldn't have used that term. But if I say, okay guys, and I'm like, no, wait, sorry. I meant, okay, everyone. And I'm verbally validating the fact that it's okay to goof. It's also important to acknowledge. And I'm thinking this circles us back to the A's, the, the little A's and the big A's. And you just showed us how to shift mindsets and perceptions so that we can shape our world. All in one, by that example, my friend, you did exactly what I talk about in the book. And so, so going, I know, wow, what, what, a, what a star pupil you are, my friend. And so um, going through this, um, it, I'm going to say this, growing up in the small town, the big difference, maybe this is like you or me, it was either Lutheran or Catholic. Mm. I was raised Lutheran, forbidden to date a Catholic boy, but they never said anything about a Catholic girl. Hey, so, so then moving forward, so I love my wife, she's Catholic, et cetera. So I was a school counselor, middle school counselor, my second year in a conservative suburb of Madison. Sitting in my office and a 12 year old student walks in, it was a student of color. Mind you, at that point, the student of color and myself, we were the diversity in the school. And the student said to me, Miss Kennecke, it's easier pretending to be a boy than it is to be gay in this town. To which I took a deep breath, realized I was a fraud because I wasn't out yet. I was afraid of getting fired. And you probably heard this in the TED Talk too. Oh, yes. Can I ask a question? Because when I was listening yes. to the TED Talk, and, and even when you shared your story earlier, I wasn't clear if that meant you weren't even admitting it to yourself or you just weren't out. And is there a difference? You can hold that question until later. Um, because I oh, I'll answer it now. Because no, that actually, that's a wonderful question. Um, I was out to myself. I was out to the staff, but not to the students. Okay. And this and this was 12 years ago, so that's a wonderful question. And I at that point I was 40 years old, white woman of privilege, and I wasn't out because I was afraid I was going to get fired. Mm -hmm. And so the shift that that student showed me was that I had to come out. So the next I came home, I told my wife, I said I need to come out. I might get fired and she's like that's okay. You have to do that to save the kid's life. Went to school the next day, found the student in a confidential space, thanked the student for their courage, came out to the, I said, you know, I'm gay. To which the student said, uh, no doubt, Miss Kennecke, we all knew that. <laughs> so, this is now the second time that I, I guess I wasn't out to myself yet, it's living my true life, but, but that's where the shift came. And in a small A ally, that's what I was. I was all about this. You know, I could, you know, I could go with it, whatever. But the capital A ally is someone who does say something mm -hmm. if they hear a homophobic, transphobic, racist joke, whatever it is, rather than just sitting back, knowing that it's not right. That capital A ally is going to be an advocate. And that's pretty much, you know, what happened. And then we worked with that family to shape policies to be more enumeration, to include more enumeration in gender identity and gender non-conforming. So that student taught me a lot. So first of all, if you guys hear that snoring, it's my dog, I apologize. I was muting myself because I was terrified of what the sounds were that might be coming through. It's okay, Got a new life happens. Everybody should know, and so you might be seeing this more often as we come forward in the next couple of se uh, sessions. So you talked about, um, Thank you to the student, but can you share the carrot story when your sister asked you about the carrots? Because I think this isn't just, this wasn't the start of this journey for you. This journey went all the way back to your childhood. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Yep, so I'll even go back to my childhood. So again, so I had mentioned that I was a tomboy. If you're not familiar with that term, just Im imagine Lisa on a farm playing with tractors. Okay, that's a tractor if you're not a rural person, GI Joes, et cetera. 
And growing up, I hung out with all the female athletes, but no idea that it was even an option. I had no gay role models or whatever. So I knew I had to date boys. I was living in the Washington DC area and I came home for Thanksgiving. I'm 25 years old at, the point, at this time, sitting around um, the typical German Lutheran um, Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, we had carrots. And I kept talking about how I just, I couldn't find anyone I liked to date. There were no boys out there. My sister, bless her heart, who is 10 years older than me, I love reminding her of that, <laughs> leans forward at Thanksgiving dinner and says, uh, no duh, Lise, it's cause you're gay. Please pass the carrots. So being the good Lutheran that I was, I picked up the carrots, passed them to my sister, and started bawling. What was I going to do? I, what was next, right? I knew all I had heard was that I was going to hell, and sorry if I can't swear on this, but that, that was my reality. So I'm happy to say I'm living my true life, and I'm better for it. Yeah, you know, I'm happy, I'm happy for you, and thank you for sharing that story, because I think if most of us reflect, we'll realize that we've had those moments. Um, but for some of us, those moments cut deeply to our identity. And for others, those moments, you know, cut to our beliefs, or they might cut into um, some idea I have for myself. The, those all are different, but they feel the same. And what's important about feeling the same, and whenever we're talking about courageous conversations, uncomfortable conversations, especially talking about allyship, it's a question of empathy. Because I think um, a lot of people, they, they see sympathy and empathy as the same thing. So for all of you, this isn't the time to do an empathy session, but go out and listen to Brene Brown, the queen of all, the, the, the king, the queen, the master of all things um, when it comes to empathy. But the best way I was talking to somebody the other day to describe it is... Um, imagine a room that's split in half and right down the middle there's a piece of glass so at first blush it just looks like one big whole room but in fact some people are on one side and some people are on the other side and those who are on one side that they, they might be on the side where people feel lonely and mm. then the other side is where people feel okay and on the lonely side i could look over and say oh i feel sorry for you people to be over there. that's sympathy but if I were to just get up and go over to the other side and sit there with them, that's empathy. And I think that, you know, what, what you did is to extend some of that empathy to yourself and understand it. And what I also hear you saying is that being a little a ally is those feelings. It doesn't mean I'm taking action, right? It just means I'm supporting you intellectually and emotionally? In my definition, yes. And anyone tuning in right now, you might be starting as a small A ally. You, know, you might end as a capital A ally. And again, not to take anything away, some of you already are capital A allies. So Jana, you are. You asked me to come on. You were open to having conversations. So that shows me that you're a capital A ally. A small A ally, now you don't have to go to a pride parade to be a capital A ally. You literally can show a rainbow and I'll know because we sniff that out. We gays sniff those little rainbow ribbons out. We love it. Look at my background. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to embarrass you. It's not embarrassing. I just think it's funny. I love your energy. I saw somebody else here that says, Lisa, I love your enthusiasm. It's infectious. I was going to say something, you know, a smart comment about that you really just bring up dog poop on the air, but I forgot. I didn't think so. Of course, I just did. So anyway, I wasn't embarrassed. I just, I just love your energy and your openness. And I think it encourages other people to be open. And, and yes, absolutely. Um, and, and I can talk about this and, and I would love for people to ask me questions. You can Google everything, but I can also be your gay Google. And, you know, if I don't know the answer, I'll find it out. And, and I don't speak for all gay people. Again, I just have my experience of what I have gone through. Um, and, and again, I know that I'm talking a lot about LGBT issues, but like you said, with the empathy situation, it could be people from whom English is not their first language, people who are neurodivergent, whatever it might be. So CPAs listening to this, you're going to be doing taxes and whatever you're going to be doing for lots of different people. 
Yeah, no, that's very true. It's funny because in my former life, I was a tax person, still a CPA. I actually have a master's of science in taxation. And I look back and I wonder why. But one of the things that I learned in that career over the, the 21 years is that in order to do a tax return really well, it's not about the numbers. I mean, I would hope so. That's what the software is for. It's about understanding the people. It's about understanding their stories. Um, and then understanding the consequences. I had a, a client, gay couple, they were looking to adopt. And the questions came up about adoption. This was before marriage was legal, gay marriage was legal. And it's, so it's, it's to your point, you really need to know the people and get to know the people. You also said you're not, you can't speak for all the gays, if that's what you said, or can't speak for everybody that's in the community. Yeah, hello, stereotypes. They don't work. Right. And and I know that we're we're bumping up against another poll question, but I do want to answer that question real quickly, too. So um, I do get this question. Um, am I considered the husband or the wife? Um, sure. So what we say in our house, it, because we are legally married, is happy spouse, happy house. And so even though I kill spiders, take out the garbage, do the stereotypical um, maybe male side of things, um, I also cook. I also clean. So I am I I would marry me because I do any and all of that. And so for us, um, it's just one of those things where, you know, that's how we work well together. So just wanted to throw that out there that you can be any and all to your relationship. That's awesome. So and now that you've done the nice plug for the polling question. Yes, let's do it. Another one. Actually, this is perfect timing for the second one. Perfect. We have just launched poll question number two. Are you familiar with the term allyship? Please let us know in the next 60 seconds. Now, here's the thing. Maybe we should have asked this up front because maybe it's cheating if we talked about allyship, but we actually haven't defined the term. So right. maybe we'll do that after now that we've, we know the answers because it's so far, it's looking like it's almost a 50-50 with more saying no than yes. This is a great opportunity. That is a wonderful opportunity. Let's see, some other comments in here. So it makes sound love enthusiasm. Oh, uh, here's a good one I'm gonna ask. Uh, gender identity, I wanna come back to that. Yep, I'm, I saw that one too. I'm never gonna have a chance to talk about all this. This is a challenge with a one hour program. Great questions. But I'll remind everyone that um, our contact information is here. If we don't get to your questions, reach out. You can reach either of us by email, um, message us on LinkedIn, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it is 40% said yes and 47% said no. So can we define allyship? For me and other people might have, so this I have not written a book on. So um, for me, it is the space of actually wanting to be empathetic, as you said, and doing something about it. So allyship comes in, in it might be where you purchase your items from. So if I am all about recycling, I am going to be an ally to that community. That's where my allyship is going to show up. If I volunteer, I might be volunteering for organizations that I'm a huge fan of um, being an organ donor. So that's my allyship to that. So it doesn't have to be just to one area. To me, that's what allyship is, is that you go above and beyond more than just the talk. So not to split hairs here, but isn't the distinction for allyship, it's supporting, engaging, learning, um, promoting a group that you aren't in versus um, being an, uh, I was going to say an advocate for a group I am in. So I might be an advocate for um, African-American women, but an ally for white women. But I'm an advocate for women in general. Like it's, it, I'm splitting hairs for a point. Isn't, well, so when people refer to allyship, the common definition is working for or supporting a group that you're not a part of. Is that right? I'm going to go with that. Yes, absolutely. And I think that um, it also goes from the vantage point, excuse me, for me, that if I am, I identify as a gay female, right? I also want to be an ally for our friends who are transgender, our friends who are 
under my umbrella. So if I take off my rainbow lenses, yes, Janae, that is an excellent answer to that. You also keep using the word privilege. And I think the word privilege has taken on a bit of a negative spin. We almost say it today as if you should be ashamed. But it's not something to be ashamed of. It's something to be to acknowledge that you have because we all have it and we have different kinds of privilege. Can you talk a little bit about when you say, you know, as a woman, a white woman of privilege, and then you continue? Mm -hmm. What what does that mean? Yep. I was raised where um, I didn't have certain barriers put in front of me. I could go into any store that I wanted to. I didn't have to worry about being followed in the store. I didn't have to worry about where I was gonna go to college. I knew that I could go wherever I wanted to. I didn't have to worry about where, what road I drove on. And that's another privilege, the fact that I even can say that my privilege was driving. I didn't have to worry about police officers, those kind of things. And so when I talk about privilege, it is that I didn't have to, and for me, a lot of it had to do with my skin color. I didn't have to worry or um, go over other barriers that people for whom ability, language, whatever it might be, had to. And so I will say that I have privilege and then I get the, the pushback, well, I worked hard growing up and you know we did this and I was a single mom, that's wonderful. And, you know, I'm trying to explain to the generation of graduate students right now that there's something that happened called redlining and you don't know what that is mm -hmm. and systemic wealth. And, you know, I know that wealth might be passed on, but that's not the case for anyone and everyone. Right. Right. And, and, you know, to say that you worked hard, I'm not trying to say you didn't work hard. Correct. I also worked hard. We're not trying to put each other down. What we're trying to acknowledge are something that are almost universal blind spots for a group. Because if you haven't had to jump over a hurdle, if the hurdle never presented itself to you, it doesn't mean the hurdle doesn't exist. It just means that you didn't have to jump over it. And that the fact that you didn't have to jump over a particular hurdle suggests you have privilege in that area. It doesn't mean you're better or worse or less or more deserving or entitled. I think a lot of people think of it as entitled. Um, so, all right. So let me see how many words have you, um, I, wrote, I, wrote down, I wrote down a lot. So I have another thing here about, you said, gay wasn't even an option. Right. Now, but you just talked about privilege. So help me out. What's the difference? So, right. So growing up, um, so I had the privilege of the fact that, okay, I was going to marry a man. Now with that privilege, let's talk about that. It would have been a middle-class person, able-bodied English speaker, you know, and where I grew up, they would have been Lutheran. So that's privilege in itself right there. And knowing that I would find someone that looked like me, sounded like me, et cetera. And so, um, It was so, oh, it was so heteronormative growing up. And what that means is it was just assumed that everyone, that you will get married, you will have children, you will have the white picket fence, the American dream for some people. So like it goes without saying. Well, and, and that was the culture that I grew up in, right? And so anyone that was different from us, they were bad, they were evil. And so I used my privilege than to learn more about other people. I didn't meet the first person, I didn't meet my first person who identified or um, was in the Jewish faith until I moved out to Washington, DC. And I was like, this is fantastic. I wanna learn more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I would have had that opportunity without my privilege. You know, you talk about Washington, DC a couple of times. I actually live in Maryland. Um, I live in Silver Spring. Yay. I believe I'm three miles, two or three miles, maybe four miles from the DC border. Um, yep. And I would say that growing up in this area, I have a different kind of privilege. And, and I want to acknowledge that because for me, there isn't a, a religion that you won't find represented here. Right. There isn't a race or an ethnicity that you won't find represented here. 
I mean, think about the fact that we have the embassies of almost every country in Washington, D.C. Walk down Embassy Row, as they call it, and you're already going to run across 25 of them, different ethnicities and languages. Um, think of a food from a culture, you can find it here. Um, it doesn't mean that racism doesn't exist here. It doesn't mean that sexism doesn't exist here. It doesn't mean homophobia doesn't exist here. But what it does mean is that I get to walk around. And there are barriers and challenges um, that I don't see. And that's a privilege for me because I will tell you when I'm I, like you, I do a lot of speaking and training. And when I'm traveling the country, I might be in a place where I am the only black person. And all of a sudden I notice there is no diversity. Very different than when I grew up. And it seems like you're having the opposite experience. You come to Washington, D.C., and you're like, wow, look at the diversity. Very different from where you grew up. Mm -hmm. It's a question of thinking. It's not a question of what's right or wrong. Yes? Right. And that um, I've only had one thing pushed on me, mm -hmm. and I've never pushed my lifestyle or anything, my thoughts on anyone. It's more about the conversation, you know, of what you're talking about. And Jana, the other thing that I loved is that I think you said recognize and, and how important that is to be able to say, oh, okay, so I am the only farm kid here with all of these rich suburban college kids who don't have to make money, hypothetically speaking, at my summer camp. And how was I going to, um, you know, be a victim of that and say, woe is me? Or it provided me an opportunity to help teach them about tractors. And then I learned about the, the urban life as well. So I, I love that. So many things. You just reminded me, I went to a school that was predominantly white and, white and very wealthy. And the, the girl, Gloria, in the room next to me in the dorm, she got a really good grade. And she wasn't necessarily the best student, but she really studied. She got this A. She was very proud of it. And then so she that afternoon, she comes back and she's like, oh, look, I got myself a Gucci bag to, to reward myself. And I remember thinking, I didn't say anything, but I remember looking at her in that bag and thinking, the money you just put into that is my entire budget for the semester, but I'm not going to say anything. Talk about feeling conspicuous. Um, so it, and it gets back to you talked about it earlier, covering and passing. But mm -hmm. sorry, I'm totally derailing this. Can we get back to the A? So you talked yep. about little A. What's a capital A ally? A capital A ally is that advocate that you talked about. Um, someone who, if I am not in the room, you're still going to be a voice for me. And and so often this might sh be shown in people's unconscious bias, microaggressions, or whatever it is. And I, uh, maybe an example for a capital A ally, um, and I was taught this, I had a student who um, was born with cerebral palsy. And and she was she she was schooling me how to teach the the graduate students about ability and accessibility. And she says, please ask me before you help me. And that's a capital A ally. And, mm -hmm. and what I think is so important is that I don't, I don't uh, think that I'm better than anyone as a capital A ally. It's just a way for me to learn. It's a way for me to, um, like you said, uh, with the allyship, right? I might um, go into a mosque and walk away with a better understanding for myself so that the next time someone makes um, a comment, I can be like, you know what? I was actually there and the people that I met fill in the blank. And, and I just wanted to acknowledge um, Amy in, in the questions too about um, the different spectrums that we are all on and our different identities. And, and again, that's where it comes down to, I don't know what it's like. I've never wanted to have children, but I always think about, and I thank people who are foster parents. Um, I have had people who, you know, and I know, I don't mean to take it down a different route, but to acknowledge military status, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. people are widowed and widower, and if they don't talk about it, maybe they're not ready to, and that's okay. So for me, that's being a capital A ally that I'm just holding space for you, if and when you're ready. Thank you, and, and I'm glad you saw that comment. Um, by the way, Amy, I will tell you that um, I do watch the Trevor Noah show, 
and Trevor had a guest on a couple of days ago talking exactly about this topic. It, I'm not going to repeat what's in her comment, but it is about what she has in her question. Um, so I love Trevor Noah, by the way. That's so fun. Are we ready? For, I, I, well, I'm so on, excited, I, I, but I don't want to. I know we have another polling question, but before I do that, I wanted to ask you another question. I have in my notes from one of our earlier calls, you can tell me if this is so not related, but I have in quotation marks, Rainbow Phoenix. Why, why did I write that down? <laughs> you, you wrote that down because, my friend, it goes back to the, are you going to be uh, in my terms? And, and so I have a master's in counseling. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I won't. Are you going to be a victim of your circumstances? Or can you be resilient when it comes to that? And because I have been disowned by my family, um, I am not allowed to see my niece and nephew because my brother is afraid they'll catch gay. I have taken those opportunities and I have risen in my world in whatever faith you have. I'm not trying to go with religion, but I have taken those opportunities and my privilege of age to teach other people. Not that you have to, I want you to learn from my mistakes. You don't have to be me, right. but red, I am that Phoenix and I am a rainbow Phoenix and I will tell everyone about that so that I can help advocate. And, and again, my lens is LGBT, but I am so in tuned to any and all other differences. Um, I always talk about doing a land acknowledgement before my presentations and knowing that I am on borrowed land for our friends and in the world of the indigenous who might identify as two spirit. Oh, I just throw a whole bunch more at you, but the rainbow Phoenix for me is taking all of my circumstances and not only surviving, but thriving. Hey, back to intersectionality. And in fact, I think that needs to be a topic on this series because I, I don't think people want understand what it means. Right. Kimberly Crenshaw. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Look that up. Um, so let's do a third polling question. And then when we come back, we're going to jump into Q&A. Can't wait. All right. That third poll question is up on everybody's screen. Are you an active ally in your organization? We would like to know in the next 60 seconds. It's interesting, Lisa, because we, we had people a moment ago who 47% weren't sure if they knew what the word stood for, but I'd be curious now if, well, now that you give me the definition, I know I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. And so far, and I think, yeah, yeah so, and I think allyship is kind of a newer term, too. I mean, we know what an advocate is. Right. Um, yeah. There are so many terms, advocate, um, sponsor, champion, mentor, coach. Right. Um, Accomplice, that's what the younger generation is using. So I see 42% so far said yes, and 39% said not sure. Um, okay. And that's cool. I mean, that's, so they're not saying no, it's just, you know, there's opportunities here to explore. Um, curiosity is a really cool thing. And yay for them saying that. I think that that takes a lot to look inside to be able to say, well, I, I don't know. And, and I will tell you friends listening right now that I do not judge. That is your, it's you, your life. And you might be able to, you might not be able to say anything either. Right, it's the saying we have in our house is stay on your side of the fence. Um, and that is a wonderful can thing. Can you imagine going out into the yard and spending all my time worrying about what the neighbor's yard is doing? My, and my yard is a hot mess. How about I stay on my side of the fence? And if we both stay on our respective sides of the fence, we can have a beautiful neighborhood. Well, and diversity. Your your yard is beautiful for the bees. We need your flowers, Jana. Yes, yes. Just so you know, we don't have flowers here. But I appreciate your, your, your thought. All right, let's go into some questions. I'm going to throw some of these at you. I have, I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. I like to consider myself an ally. And there have been a number of times when I confronted friends and family about homophobic comments and they responded that it's just a joke and I should not be so sensitive. So how do you respond to that, Lisa? Um, first of all, my very, very first thing to respond to that is, is it a safe situation for you to even answer that question or to engage in what is said? Um, so, and I say that, as a woman, perhaps that's why I say that, you know, if you are dealing with somebody who said that and they are three sheets to the wind, they're super drunk, they're going to be aggressive, do not engage. 
And so to me, it, it's finding that space. And then, you know, the next thing could be, hey, you and I can be your gay best friend. I mean, that's fine. You know, I have a friend, I have a sibling, whatever it might be. And, you know, I just that that maybe that hurts. Maybe that's what you can say to them. Or um, you might think that that's a joke. And maybe that's not cool. Is that what you want your kids to grow up learning? There are so many different answers to that. And dear friend who asked that question, because you asked that question, I know that you will follow your gut and know what the right thing is to say. And, and if I may add to that, um, I, I mean, I Please. couldn't agree with you more about, about being safe. I also think it's important for folks to know you don't have to take it on in the moment. You can just, you know, so if you and me and Bob are at the water cooler and Bob makes a joke and I say something and Bob like, oh, come on, I'm just, it's just a joke. It's not that funny. And yet I know it hurt you. Mm -hmm. So, and we choose to say nothing. That's okay. I could, what I would hope is I'd come back to you, Lisa, and say, I'm really sorry that you had to hear that. That sucks. And then go back to Bob and say, Bob, but was it really though? No. And have that conversation in private because a lot of us can be very defensive in public. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one. Are you, oh, they asked, you asked this one. Are you considered a wife or a husband in the relationship? Scratch, okay, you win. You answered one in advance. All right. I'm a spouse. I hear the term he, she, and she, mm -hmm. he often. Is this Ooh, yes. acceptable? Um, so um, well, let's do pronouns 101 in 10 seconds. So, um, no, to answer your question. So you don't call someone a he, she, or a she, he. The old, old, old term is hermaphrodite, and the new term is now intersex. Intersex is when a baby is born and a baby comes out, Dr. Ardula looks at baby, they have parts that it's hard to distinguish, how do I assign this baby? There are more people who are born intersex than those who have cleft palates. And so we don't use he, she anymore. If you are worried, now the question about pronouns is that yes, I use she, her pronouns. And if you are working with people who are younger than me, they may a lot of times use the term they, mm -hmm. and that is acceptable for you people in the English world, 2019 added to Merriam-Webster dictionary, dictionary. So we don't say he, he, she anymore. It might be either, um, gender non-conforming, it might be non-binary, it might be queer, and it might be transgender. So there are a lot of terms out there. You know, and um, for those who are interested, I did a webinar called The Language of DNI. It's available on CPA Academy as an archive on demand, I believe. And I think we're even going to be rebroadcasting it in, in a couple of weeks. And we touch on a little bit about the gender. So I'm, you know, I thank you for going into that. Um, I saw somebody on a Zoom meeting recently. You know how people put their pronouns in their names? Yep. Their pronouns were she, they. Yep. How can somebody be a she and a they? So, uh, great question, and you're going to be seeing more of that. So, I might initially present as a, as a she. And so you look at me and I'm a she. If I have they after it, now I don't, but this person, I know someone who does that. Mm -hmm. what, that what they're trying to say is that, dear anyone else and everyone else, I am open to, it could be your pansexual, it could be your asexual, whatever it is. And so presenting as female, she, and I'm also accepting of they. It may be certain situations where you are that you don't want to identify as a female. Right. And it could be vice versa for a man. It, it also means that when I'm referring to that person, I refer to that person as they or them and not as. Right. Me. Right. Yeah. And it could be that, you know, they left their cell phone at the restaurant. So they had to come back and get their cell phone. That's my example. As opposed to saying she left her cell phone. Yep. All right. Next question. How can we control discrimination in working place or society? Not over night there so um it can be done and it's more in my opinion it's more of a marathon and if i have to lose a sprint here and there um that's what it is but by starting with this um webinar series and learning education is where it starts and it is standing up and saying you know that's just not right when uh, the number one microaggression is that women get talked over in meetings. So when we're talking about workspace, if you are not a female and if you're able to, to stand up and advocate and say, you know what, no, let's hear what Jana has to say. That's mm -hmm. how you start changing things. 
So let's see. Oh, wow. I think John looked this up. I'm, this is, is going to take a minute. <laughs> John, I think. So John looked up the acronym lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, yep. questioning or queer, intersex plus other gender variants. Yep. And so it's all of those things. You know, now John challenged me because I remember looking up acronyms and one of them, I'm not kidding, was something like 14 letters long. And I didn't oh, yeah. understand all of this. Yes. And in the world of two spirits, sometimes there's a two and an S, especially in Canada. That's how they use it. So I'm just throwing out the Lisa Kennecke from the Human Rights Campaign. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Human Rights Campaign, HRC. Great. Yep. yep. Um, so many of these seem to be more comments than questions. Lisa, I love happy spouse, happy house. I'm heterosexual and my husband and I also share traditional roles in our house. I'm going to start using that too. Thank you for being so open. Love your energy. It's free. You're welcome. Buy one, get one free, right? Uh huh. Next one says Ally, a person who advocates for and takes actions to support people outside of their own group. That's very succinctly put um, what I was thinking. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay. I like that thought catch the gay. Can uh -huh. one catch non gay? Would we even uh -huh. call it that? I mean, <laughs> It's a fascinating comment because too often we, effort, everything is referenced from the perspective of the majority. Yep. We never flip it and look at it from the other direction because it's two sides of the same coin. And in our world where I am, especially in Madison, Wisconsin, even though I'm in a bubble, it is, um, I live in a heteronormative world. So it again, it is assumed that there is a man who is the husband, um, a female who is the wife. And so, you know, you don't say, well, you can't catch straight. So in my world, right, I think everyone is born gay until they are proven differently. That's just me. That's how inclusive I am. And just real quickly, when we come to any directions, if we're at a stoplight and if we want to go forward, we always say gaily forward, we never go straight. So there you go, friends. That's a little boom, boom, shh for you. Yeah. All right, so look, we have three minutes left. And so before okay. we go, I have, I see two questions. All right, one is a smart comment, but I'll get to that. Before we do that, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, this is a bi-weekly series. We have every other Friday at three o'clock Eastern, two weeks from now, Jason Shreve is joining me. He works at Frank Rimmerman um, & Co. I, think, I believe they're based in, I don't remember what city in California. And we were talking the other day about how overwhelming it can be for a lot of CPA firms. Where do we start? What do we do? We, we know we want to do something, but what? And, and I know in my work, there seems to be this fear of doing the wrong thing. So I asked Jason to talk to us about what they did in their firm to get started. So I encourage you all to join us. Um, I'm really looking forward to that conversation. All right. So back to all right, the smart, um, smart Alec, I was trying to think what's the safe word, comment is, can I be fitted with a shot collar to stop me from mansplaining? Okay, I just have to say Timothy, that was hilarious. Um, and then there was another question. Oh, where did it go? Um, can you explain the pronoun to someone identifying as they? So you talked about it a little bit, but can you help just people understand they as a singular term? Yep. And what I'll do is I'll answer the binary question too. When we are born, you are usually put into a binary box, it, all male, all female. And so chromosomes uh, beside, we have traits of everything. So that's the binary. And so they is someone who maybe they want to dress differently or express themselves differently. And they don't want to be put into that binary box of male, female, they. Thank you. All right. And Trevor Project is wonderful. Yes, Trevor Project, suicide prevention, wonderful. So, Christine, let's do the last polling yes. question and then we'll wrap up. That sounds good. All right, we are launching the last poll question of the webinar. So, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you get your vote in. We'll keep this open for 60 seconds. So, you, you, you mentioned another. Was it the Trevor Project in your TED Talk? You, you mentioned it about... Yep, yep. And I have a pen, and that's what made me... The pen was on my desk when that student came out to me, and I was like, if I don't help this student, they may either run away or they may kill themselves because um, over 50% of the youth who are homeless are LGBT, 
mm -hmm. and and um, of adults who identify as transgender, they are the highest um, attempt rate and unfortunately success rate of um, dying by suicide. Yeah, I mean, the statistics are staggeringly painful when you start looking at those statistics. Mm -hmm. And yes, the A, can't, A, the A does stand for those things. It also stands for allies. So good question, Ashley. So 56% said they learned something new. 10% reminded me of something I already knew. 8% curious. And honesty, we value that 22% that they're here for the CPE. That was the most valuable part. And that's okay too. At least they were here right and listening to the conversation. Thank you, Lisa, for joining Thanks us today. I think we could do this conversation every day. Um, on Lisa's page, you have on Lisa's page on the uh, PowerPoint, you have her contact information here. You have mine. You're welcome to reach out to us anytime if we can answer questions. Thank you all for joining us, and thank you for joining me, Lisa. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Christine, for all of your help. Thank you, everyone, from wherever you're calling in from. All right, Christine, you can close us out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you to Jana and Lisa for a great presentation on what I think is such an important topic. I really enjoyed that discussion as well. So thank you so much. And as a reminder for our attendees, we at CPA Academy will process your CPE credit later today, which will be available in your accounts along with a recording of this webinar and a copy of the handouts. The evaluation link is also available in your email inbox as well. So thank you again to Jana and Lisa, and thank you to all of you for attending today. Make sure you check out our calendar on cpaacademy.org, and we hope to see you all on future webinars. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Jana. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Oop, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, friends.